with fellow blenderers. This is Peter here with PM Designs. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of ways where you can get this kind of sticky, liquidy portal effect where, well, whatever surface will stick to your character as they pass through it. So let's get straight on with it. So I've got my, I've got a character set up here. I've got a, a portal and a portal machine kind of thing. I didn't make these. I've just downloaded them purely for this tutorial. And so I've just very quickly got him animated walking through a portal. Um, doesn't, it's not a good animation, but I just did it very quickly. As you can see, he's, he's, it's just a walk cycle. So he's walking through that portal. We want to make this portal kind of stick onto him and latch onto him as he comes through. So there are a couple of ways we can do this. Let's start with the easiest one, and that's going to be selecting my portal. So I'm going to add a modifier to my portal here, which is going to be a shrink wrap modifier. And I'm going to switch from wrap method, switch the wrap method to be project. And the target is going to be my character here. And as you can see, nothing's happening at the moment. But it only happens when I go back this way, which would be, which is exactly what you want to do if you want to have your character entering the portal. But I'm having my guy exiting, and the reason it's happening that way is because of the direction of my normals. My portal is just a flat plane, so all I need to do to fix that is come over to my shrink wrap modifier here and choose negative and disable positive. I could leave both on because then it's going to go both ways, but I don't want that for this effect. I just want it to appear as he comes through. So there we go. That's the kind of one kind of sticky portal effect going on here. Um, unfortunately, it's going to follow him forever. It will follow the guy as he goes home. Uh, we don't want that. So we're going to set a limit on here on the distance. So I think I want it to stop about here. So we'll set the limit at, let's go 0.5. Okay, 0.6. There we go. So it will follow him to 0.6 and then it will stop. Okay, unfortunately, from this frame, where it's still sticking to him, to the next frame, it does just immediately snap back. But what you could do is keyframe this, so you just bring that up a little bit, go to the next frame, bring it up a little bit until it's still sticking to him slightly. Point of the back of his head is going to be the, the last point of contact. So if I bring that to let's go 0.79, then I could have it snap back. It wouldn't look too bad. Okay, so this is one method here. I'll leave it at 0.79. That looks fine. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that looks pretty good. So now all I want to do is just give this some subdivision, which you can do directly in this shrink wrap modifier. So it will look a little bit better as it latches onto the guy, a little bit smoother, kind of more gloopy, I guess is the word. Um, I say now one problem I have, this is a great model. I didn't make the model, I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not bad enough in the model, but I have a problem here in that my, uh, this guy's, uh, What's this called? The visor here is completely separate from the rest of his head. There's a, a gap in the vertices. So that means that the, the shrink wrap will kind of come through here. If your head is completely solid, it's fine. It won't, that won't happen. Going back to my shrink wrap modifier here, what I want to do is as he comes through, I want it to be kind of pushed forward by his face. So that's down here with the offset. And as I mentioned earlier, I know that my normals are facing this way and I've got my shrink wrap set on negative. So I'm just going to use this offset and I'm going to move it in the negative direction. So now we get this kind of effect where he's pushing it as he walks through. It's being pushed as he walks through, it's being pushed by him. Which is kind of cool. And it goes, what's nice about this compared to another method I'm going to talk about in a minute is that it goes, it shrinks back in the right way. It goes backwards over his head or around his head, which I think looks quite good. And yeah, so that is one of the methods I think looks pretty good as a kind of gloopy portal transition. And you could just, you know, you can mess around with these settings here yourself to get your desired effect. I'm going to talk about the next method in a moment, but before I do that, I just want to give my, I want to give my portal some more geometry and make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface, which I'm going to move above the shrink wrap for now. And I'm going to add a displace modifier. I'm going to give it a texture, so I click New, go over here to where it says Show Texture in Texture tab, or I could just click on that one, and I'm going to add Cloud Texture, and I'm just going to bring that down to about 0.2, so it's got some kind of rippliness going on. You could animate this, but I'm not going to talk about that now. Um, you know, you could make this this texture you know spin around or whatever, so it looks more interesting. But just for now, I'm going to just have a look at that. So, but the displace going on after the shrink wrap or I could move it above the shrink wrap, which makes it look a little bit sharp, but that's fine because I can just add another subdivision modifier down here 
it makes it look a little bit smoother. So now we've got we've got subdivision, we've got some displacement going on, we've got the shrink wrap, and then we've got more uh, subdivisions to make it look a little bit smoother. So let's talk about the next effect. Hide my shrink wrap, and I'm going to select my portal and come down here to physics properties, and I'm going to add dynamic paint. You can also do this from the modifiers, but you have to go to the phys physics tab anyway. So let's just go here. Dynamic paint, and I want it to be a canvas, and I'm going to click add canvas. I'll come back to this in a moment. I'm going to click on my character, dynamic paint, and I'm going to change the type to brush, and I'm going to add brush. So going back to my going back to my portal here, my uh, canvas, as it were, there are two methods we can use here. Both have their pros and both have their cons. I'm going to come down here to surface type, and I'm going to change this to displace. And it goes absolutely crazy because this is a cacheable physics property. So when I'm in the you know on the frame 80, it just doesn't like it. So I need to go back to the beginning and start again. Play it again. And you can see that starts to displace around him quite nicely. But now it's cached a little bit. It's stuck forward. It looks kind of like Abyss or Stargate. If you have seen that, you could use this to make a kind of Stargate effect. Um, I want this to dissolve back after some time. So it's not difficult. I've got my portal selected under the physics properties, dynamic paint, come down here, click dissolve. And so here, the time is literally frames. So it will start dissolving from the moment that it makes contact. So in this one, I think it's about frame 40, that where he, where he initially makes contact. Yeah, and it will start, it will take 250 frames to dissolve from there. So if I put it on 10 frames, you'll see that by frame 50, it's already started to dissolve. And it dissolves back quite quickly. So this, I'm going to leave that on about 40, I think. This is one effect. It has, it's quite nice, but you can't really get it to sit in front of the guy's face like we did with the shrink wrap. You can, but it doesn't look right basically. So you go to the displace factor here and you just increase that, put that on 1.1. So that is basically determining how displaced it will be. And so it's going to go in front of his face. I'll put it up higher just to make it clear. 1.2 for now. And as he comes, I'll press play. As he comes forward, it's stuck on the front of him, which looks cool. And I could add a sub, let me just move my dynamic paint above this subdivision. Yeah, it looks fine, but it just sticks on front of his face. And as it dissolves, it goes back through his head, which <laughs> I don't think maybe you want that effect. I don't want that effect. So that's the kind of con of doing it this way. It does look, it does look really cool, but as soon as you want it to sit in front of the guy's face, you get that problem. And you can't have multiple dynamic paint modifiers on one object. So you couldn't like trick it and do one with dissolve and one with whatever. So that's the big con of this one. If it, if it weren't for that, I would say this one looks really cool because it sticks to him nicely and it, will, and it dissolves back. But okay, let's, do, let's try another one. Go to my dynamic paint, and go back down to where I chose surface type as displaced. I'm gonna change it to waves. So now if we press play on this one, it should look pretty nice. So that one I think is probably the best out of the three different effects because um, it it sticks on the front of him and you got the ripple afterwards it affects the whole mesh there and you get yeah it's just a very nice effect i think at the moment the, the ripples are too strong and it affects the whole portal here so what i can do is come down to damping and increase that so if i put that at point one for now that's going to reduce the sort of violence of the waves yeah so it still follows him but the whole thing doesn't vibrate so much and again we can mess with the springiness here if i make it i'm gonna put this on one yeah so you get this we're still using quite a high damping but you get more spring more bounce in that center part i can raise this i could make the spring very low Let's put it on 0 0.01. And it's kind, of, it's kind of sticks to him more, but in that case, I want to increase the damping so it doesn't bring the whole portal.
portal forward. Yeah, and this can be keyframed. So you could have it start fairly um, sticky, following him quite a long way, and then have it snap back faster. So that's, that's what I think is the best method is this wave uh, dynamic paint. But we can also just remember you need to bake this. I'm gonna go into my modifiers tab here, enable my shrink wrap modifier. I'm gonna leave it above dynamic paint for now and then see what happens. Go back down to physics properties and I'm gonna bake my dynamic paint again. So hopefully now it will take into account the, the projected shrink wrap, which should follow. And let's see what we get. Goes a little, it goes very crazy. Okay, it's not liking that too much. Let's delete that bake. And I'm gonna switch the order of this. I'm gonna bring the shrink wrap down here below the dynamic paint and try that again. Let's see what we've got. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's not too bad, but I just, I didn't, I didn't reset the springiness on it. It's, it's got barely any spring in there. But I think that looks pretty cool. And what you could do is you could have the displacement attached to an object and you rotate the object around as he exits. It would add a nice effect. But just before I leave that, I'm going to set this back to point two, which I believe was the default setting. And I'm going to bake that one more time. And now let's see what happens. So it's, well, we can bring the damping up. Let's bring the damping down, sorry, point zero four was the default. Leave the bake bake again. So yeah, you can mess around with those settings. You know, try different orders of this. You know, add more subdivisions before and after. We had a subdivision after. We might get a better effect here. So yeah, I think I've given you the the tools here, and now you can just get on with it and mess around with it yourself. You've got your, uh, you know, I would say the waves looks best, but if you want to do, you know, displace, get in there, play around with the settings. Don't forget to bake before you render. Um, you could try different orders here. So I would say this, this stack is probably the optimal order. And that's it. So if you found that useful, please drop a like. Thanks very much.